Welcome to iCarly. This is Siren. I am joined by Broken Pinky. Uh, how are you doing? We're getting right into it. So, Yeah, jumping right on into this Div 4 match. We have uh, Road Rage versus Nano Tracen uh, here in this Week 2 matchup. Uh, Road Rage, pretty familiar team in the Div 4 scene. Uh, friend of the stream and fellow commentator Skepidillions, as well as, you know, Sencon, Devade, and Seals. Uh, but yeah. Nano Tracen, 1-0 after the first match. Yeah, I haven't been able to keep up with Div 4 too much recently. I did see a bit of the Road Rage stuff from last week because Skep did post about it themselves. Uh, so I think this should be an interesting match. Of course, one of these teams has some level of prestige with some notable faces of Sencon and Skep, like you mentioned before, being there as well. But I'm really looking forward to... Actually, I recognize Boshin um, and Pixel, I believe, from Nano Tracen as well. So this would be interesting. I think they, they, they both go to land. And that's kind of, as you know, more of my forte, so that's, that's like right in there. I'm, I'm excited. Nice. We love good land cultures. But yeah, we're just jumping right into it. So let's get into it. Splat zones on uh, Mako Mart. We're seeing the uh, Octoshot, Dually, and Long Rapid. And we're seeing V-Try and Carbon Deco with Custom x -Flow. Interesting comp. Yeah, I. that's very much like... I, I, I find the x -Flow has been a, kind of a sleeper until more recently where more people are playing it. I think I saw Umbri playing it last week. Uh, so so now a lot of teams starting to pick up the weapon a little, a little bit more. It does have a lot of good capability for splat zones and it does service to help slow down the opponent team quite a bit, which in this kind of meta is very important. Yeah, and it does just a lot of good paint, a lot of good chip damage from quite a long range. But right now, Road Rage is all the control in this match. They're popping the Tri-Strikes as well. Uh, this actual player trying to find Deviate here, but Deviate on the duel is just being so incredibly annoying. Ancient's going to be paused to try and get uh, Nano Trace and back into mid, but uh, Hayden's actually going to find that pick. But even still, Road Rage down to, uh, into the 40s already in their point total, and Nano Trace and kind of running out of time a bit. Yeah, that that's more than half the counter down in the first minute of the game. So uh, Nano Tracen definitely gonna have to cut some slack for themselves here on the on the on the line. Uh, <laughs> but Hayden getting onto that stack is gonna have to back up a little bit as Road Rage caps the zone once again. Looks like they're trying to find some picks to make this a bit of a better push. Uh, Skep getting the pick on Pixel here as they are working on building up a cooler as well, and that's gonna come out right away. They're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, Road Rage uh, has the coolest pop, and Nano popped all their specials pretty early just to get the cap back onto the zone, but even still, Road Rage has a fair amount of control in this map, so if they can find some picks and get their early cap, this is still looking pretty solid for Road Rage, but Nano Tracing, I mean, just really been excelling on their burst paint capabilities, you know, with the burst bomb from the carbon and, you know, the x just painting how it normally does, but even still, Road Rage going to be able to take this fight thanks to Sencon on the long rapid, uh, and right now, Nano Tracing kind of struggling to get their foot, you know, back in the game. Yeah, I, I, I like the at, like angle they have of a lot of chip damage. Uh, that Rapid's going to be able to pop that Killer Whale. And, and, and the Dooley's with the Crab as well. That, that, that should deliver a good amount of, you know, get out of here levels of damage. So that <laughs> might be a bit of a struggle for the Expo to get in. But you can see that they've actually gotten themselves in a pretty decent position here. It's just a matter of moving past that and getting into the locations that team, like the Team Road Rage is in right now. Uh, as you see, they do pop that, getting a little bit greedy for the cooler and are going to go down as they pick that up right away. That's two down onto the side of Row Rage as uh, Nano Tracen does cap the zone. And now they're looking to finally move up and move a bit past this here. Hayden getting in a good spot to GG under this ledge, getting a pick onto Sencon very early on. That's going to allow Hayden to move up even farther with this and hopefully collapse with their teammates. Yeah, and I mean, it's, I like that you pointed out Hayden on the try. I feel like this is one of the best master try slasher in the game, and Hayden has been making great use of the V try, even if it's, you know, underused kit. Right now, though, Nano Chasing closes the lead, trying to find this cap, trying to hold on as long as possible. Hayden and the Expo trying however they can, but Road Rage does not want to be denied right now. They're going to find the pick on a pixel as well. Devade trying to collapse on uh, this Expo as, <laughs> right as they jump out, but Road Rage is still going to hold on to their lead. Yeah, I like that splash wall there, absolutely. Just, just stopping the full momentum of the duelies there. Uh, so that that is going to be a bit of a struggle there. They've already burnt through their penalty here. So maybe on this attempt, trying to get the knockout, uh, Nano Tracen kind of in a rough position here is going to have to pop some specials early on and hope for at least one or two picks to try and get back into the zone. Otherwise, they're going to have to just you know, put all the pressure they can on capping so they can give themselves another chance here, which they are able to do. Uh, but will they get another hold that's better than the last one is a different question altogether. 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm just seeing more specials from Nano Tracing, but they're always used to sort of get re-entry as opposed to continuing their push. And I feel like that's something that Road Rage is really taking advantage of. But here come the strikes and Road Rage trying to get the team back in. Hayden's going to get traded out, though, uh, with that Octoshot player. Or, sorry, with the other one. And now Seal's trying to paint out, trying to get this cap here. Not a minute left in this game. It's been looking all Road Rage so far, but Nano is definitely capable of making this comeback. And it's going to start with uh, this X with getting some nice picks, a nice double there. Yeah, getting the pick on a Sencon and the shot as well on the side of Road Rage. That's actually going to be a pretty big deal as far as worrying about people who can cap the zone quickly. Uh, so that's going to give Terrier Mom some space to move up here on the left. Is able to get the assist with their teammate there. They're looking at no penalty at the moment. They have that splash down as a bit of a security safety net there. Um, the strikes for me, I think they're a little bit premature, as you can see. It's just three people out left on the stack of Road Rage as they come back into the zone here. It's kind of an interesting approach, but you can see Hayden and Pixel getting behind them. Going to be able to trump that crab and get that trade, and that's a big deal. They've been able to reclaim the lead, and getting a trade there is not going to be ideal for Road Rage. It's just going to be Terrier Mom and one other on the zone. They're going to be able to hold out long enough. That Rapid cannot outpaint that. Wow, what what a great comeback game one from Nano Trasson. I mean... It's so like we said, it was looking all road rage for pretty much the entirety of the game. And then Nanotrasson, you know, got some picks of the X-Flow and got that hold. Used the splashdown to deny people trying to hold forward into the zone and converted that into a nice game win. Yeah, I it was not looking very promising for them very early on. But with comps like that, that are a little bit slower, they, they definitely excel more when you get them into positions where they can basically play checkmate and, and just sit there and go all right well i have the splashdown ready i'm just chucking things at you i'm waiting for you to approach us and well they kind of all approach from the same angle there which is you know against an aoe team probably not the move but i understand with the pressure of the game and and, and needing to make a, a last minute decision and only having that one chance you, you've got to make some rash choices here and there right uh yeah. in that instance didn't quite pay off for them the way they may have hoped uh because it did seem like nano tristan caught on to their uh their entry point um but maybe that'll be a learning point for them later on in the set yeah, and I mean, I, would, I, would, I want to point out that, um, you know, Amtras, and they are 1-0 in the stats, but the set they won last week was a game 9 versus rule of 4, so they're familiar with, you know, playing and excelling in very high-pressure situations um, when the chips are stacked, so, I mean, that helps them get that little game win there, get some good momentum going, and now uh, it's up to Road Rage to try and stop that and get some uh, positive momentum going in their favor. It's going to have to happen on Clam's Crab Leg here. Clams on crab leg. That can be a little bit rough, and I'm almost expecting a bit of a comp change if that's in their wheelhouse as well, uh, at least from the side of Nanotress, and I feel like Road Raid was decently agile enough to deal with clams in particular, but we'll see what they operate with here. I think even teams like Triggerfish Zones that operate with a uh, Expo all the time might not even switch it out here. They, they definitely play to its strengths quite a bit, but I can understand how that's a, like a difficult... Uh, thing to adapt to with a lot of maps, especially like big ones like this where it has like all these grates and you just kind of want something that can poke and do it very, very, very far distances here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like both the comps last game are fairly short range for the most part, but Crab Leg is one of the best long range maps in the game, especially Pencil. It's just, it reigns supreme on this map more than pretty much any other, so... If these teams have more long-range options than their uh, tool toolbox, I could see them tend towards that. Or we might just see more of the same and some more uh, brawling in mid, which would be fun to see, of course. Looks like same old, same old. The seal is going to be going over to the V-Shots. And we're seeing a Nova from Terrier as both the Axel and the Pencil coming out as well. Yeah, I'm not surprised by the choice to move off of Explo and onto Pencil here, as we were talking about before. The Nova does, does surprise me a little bit, but I think when you have a strong belief in the kit, it's it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, it definitely paints a lot, which is necessary for these bigger maps. And uh, who knows, maybe they're pretty good with the gunfights with it as well. I mean, it looks like they already won one here on the top right. And now Hayden is here with the support with the squeezer. Yeah, pretty much all the members of Nanotrass and switch their weapons, but they're playing them successfully. Hayden gets a nice double here on top right, patrolling this area. Meanwhile, the pencil has uh, six clams already, close to a power clam. Terrier going to be using that inkjet to find a pick, and uh, this might just be an early score for Nanotrass in here. Yeah, Nano Tristan getting in very early. That um, cooler is going to come out just in the nick of time as they return here, trying to probably get some more dunks into the basket. Terrier Mom having to drop once again. Uh, but actually, hold on, they're getting more in. Uh, I, I, I like this approach of just 
putting each clam in periodically. They're not looking for a burst. They, they realize that they've won their fight early on, and they want to continue that as long as possible. Uh, so getting it down to 48 this early is kind of crazy on this map. It's a bit difficult to, to compete with uh, when it's a very defense-heavy map. So uh, Road Rage, I would say, definitely has their work cut out for them for the rest of this game. But you can see they're already getting on top of things. Yeah, already getting two picks, three picks is just going to be the squeezer. Hayden kind of locked in spawn, trying to find some picks, you know, trying to laser down some people. Road Rage does not have that many clams yet. It might not be enough for the lead yet, but they just have to keep this pressure cycling as long as possible. Now I think they have enough for the lead if Devade can uh, get going on that graded area here. It's just a little bit close, but it looks like the lead is successfully taken up by Road Rage here. Probably going to be the end of their push, though, 47 to 48. This game already incredibly close, just two minutes in, but uh, Road Rage does have the lead at the end of the day. Yeah, you can see Pixel here looking to make sure that nobody from Road Rage is sitting under these ledges. You can see them kind of scouting out what's what's happening and, and trying to find routes for their re-entry as well. Uh, you, you can see they're a little uh, caught off guard by the fact that Road Rage is pushing up so quickly uh, into their base at this point in time. And I, to be honest, I would be too. Once that push is done the first time, like you, you guys still have a pity clam. You haven't picked that back up yet. Uh, things need to happen first before you get in that position usually. So it's it's kind of a gutsy move, but I respect it a lot. Yeah, Terry trying to break this crab with the ancient shots is going to be able to do so. And that is... I mean, right now, we're in a bit of neutral game here. Terrier's trying to find some shots of the Nova, but Pixel just sneaks by with the roller to get the power of him in, but it's not going to be enough for the lead, and they get wiped out right as they loot or get rid of the penalties, so lead still barely in favor of Road Raging. Nanotrust and getting wiped out there is really bad for their prospects because here comes Seals already with the power clam, and uh, Road Rage is ready to score if they can find the picks, but they looks like they got a bit too aggressive too early. Yeah, maybe jumping the gun a little bit there, but we can see Sencon playing pretty strong recovery here. Uh, the pencil on the side of Nanotrescent is kind of ready to deal with whatever is coming up this ramp here, so maybe needing to take some alternative angles for the time being. That killer whale is going to come out, but Pixel, I think, actually getting a double with that curling bomb there is going to say, hey, this is my time to get back into mid. I see you have a power clam here. I'm not letting you pick that up. Curling bomb double live on stream. It does not happen very often, but it happens more often than you think sometimes. Um, but regardless, Nanotrasen, ooh, Zuka pick is going to be coming out from Road Rage. Should just keep Nanotrasen locked in their plat, it seems. Terrier tries to find a pick with the Inkshot, but it's going to get taken down themselves, and Road Rage is able to score again. Um, although I don't think this is going to do much other than just give Nanotrasen another power clam to work with. So might not have worked out as well as Road Rage would have liked, but what matters is they're still keeping, you know, now trusting in a really, you know, like stringent lockout, it seems. Yeah, what I do find interesting about the position we're in, which we don't see all too often, is both teams are in a spot where one power clam is going to extend their lead by some extent. Um, neither of them have a penalty over 20. Uh, so this kind of puts them in an odd spot, especially with the one point difference that like whatever team does this first in the next minute or so is going to be in a, in, in a much better spot regardless of how much it is, unless it's a knockout at this point, right? Um, so... It really depends on how you look at it, but with that being said, Road Rage saying, all right, well, we'll prevent it as much as we can because we're going to fight and make sure that we hold this lead by just, you know, if you guys are down and we're also down, we're still in the better spot. Yeah, the best way to stop your opponent from taking space is to take it yourself, and uh, Road Rage is going to be living and dying by that philosophy, it seems. Going to be lowering their lead down to 28 uh, compared to 48. So now, Nanotrasen needs more than a power claim. They have to do a little bit more work to get the lead. Skep gets... Uh, Taken down with the power band just before they can make it to the basket, but regardless, 10 seconds left until overtime's gonna start. Nano Tracing, you know, this is their last shot, but we saw how they can make comebacks uh, from that last game, so it's truly not over till it's over, but here come those overtime horns. Yes, the overtime horn starting. Boshin trying to find an entry spot as well. That Zuka's going to be coming out. I'm sure they're counting down the shots. As they're counting down the seconds remaining to go in the game, that bubble's going to be coming out. That fight is going to be basically won there. It's just going to be one under the basket for them. Are they going to be able to get that power clam? Pixel able to pick it up. They're tossing it, but it's just going to barely graze that basket as the countdown ends. Miss managing the balls, it fell off the ledge. I think two or three people uh, got picked there on that ledge while holding a power clam, and it just fell down to the bottom, and Pixel was not able to pick them up from where they were standing in time. So Road Rage, by the skin of their teeth, to be honest, is going to be taking game two over Nanotrasen and, and tying the score up. Yeah, what an interesting game, and I, I think that does speak to sort of the 
early game uh, play styles that we were looking at in Akumart as well, of just Road Rage liking to run up and they take a lot of fights and whether they pay off or not is <laughs> a different question, but in this scenario they definitely did for them. Uh, you know, Clan Blitz being one of those uh, game modes that rewards agility and much, much more than Splat Zones. So, uh, in, in that sense, even even the fights they weren't winning were basically won for them. Yeah, I mean, that was, like you said, just a very awkward game from start to finish, but uh, Road Rage was going to prosper in that sort of weirdness there. Going to be taking it that game. Just, man, that overtime was so stressful, but Road Rage able to hold on uh, through the thick of it. So both these teams showing that they can uh, clutch up when it matters most. So this this could be a very interesting set as we go forward into game three on a tower ship shaped cargo. Yeah, tower control on ship shaped cargo company. I think this one has a lot of people torn, uh, but in my opinion, I don't know if you'll match up with me on this. I think this is one of those maps where it's like once you get to a certain point, knockout is basically like if you don't get it, then it's it's very surprising. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's very knockout heavy, it's very comeback heavy on that same note. If you're able to come back, you are going to come back. Um, and, and that does make it a very interesting viewership experience. Um, but I wonder if it's one of those things where uh, Road Rage's strengths will come into play again. Yeah, this map kind of feels like they, you know, added the two checkpoints and then they took out everything else on the map. Um, because... Really, it feels like just as soon as you break the first checkpoint, you're already at the second, and as soon as you break the second checkpoint, the game kind of just ends. So, yeah. those two checkpoints are really, really crucial bomb the nuts, especially that second one, because, I mean, like you said, Siren, this map knocks out a lot, and it usually happens at that second checkpoint where just an untimely wipeout ends the game a little bit too quick. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, I, I, I don't know if I can really anticipate much in the way of comp changes or anything like that but uh maybe maybe some quick conversation before we start this game are you <laughs> participating in Ludi this season uh, i am not actually i did i i haven't i didn't last season either um but yeah <laughs> not participating in the season how about you siren are you i am not um nice <laughs> <laughs> i i did last season but things with a2p assault and pepper uh mm. have been uh a little slow recently uh with with school multiple of us are in school and post-secondary and jeff is in china right now so that kind of hmm. makes things a little difficult so yeah as it tends to um but yeah we're going back to game three uh looks like road rage going back to their game one comps terrier switching on to the uh long rapid here for you know some long range aoe and already i mean my goodness, now Tracen is incredibly flexible with their weapon picks. I think already 10 unique weapons in just three games. Yeah, that's quite a lot to be going through here, though. Road Rage definitely sticking to the same stuff we've been seeing before. Sencon staying on that beloved Rapid Pro Deco, uh, my, my dear weapon. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting a very early pick onto Terrier Mom, who's playing the mirror match. Getting that first pick, but is not able to follow up with the spark. Pixel going to be camping this area. Seeing two, sees another jump in on that cooler there. Is able to escape. That is the, the strength of the dually there, but you can see Pixel is right on top of that as well. They're watching every freaking footstep they make. Yeah, Carbon is so terrifying whenever it you know, gets that little bit of space it needs just to shark. and It just kills so fast from a deceptively long range, it feels like at times. But already Nano Tracing through that first checkpoint, pushing toward that second. You just see the points melt away, and already d popping the crabs, strikes are popping out. Uh, Road Rage knows this is kind of do or die already in just the first minute. Yeah, it's just going to be the Nautilus left onto the side of Nano Tresson right now. You can see kind of Devade looking around, trying to find where they are. Is able to spot out Hayden on their bottom right side there. Uh, the next question for me would be, did anyone jump in there? Uh, but I, I think we're, we're looking pretty safe as for the time being. Though, then again, that's not going to stop like three members of Nano Tresson from just running up and trying to get more picks like they did in the beginning of the game. And oh my gosh, did it pay off! Yeah, right as you said that, I'm pretty sure Pixel jumped in uh, to Hayden on the Nautilus as they went down, snuck behind, find, found two picks, and then Terrier found two more uh, from the front. And already this tower is back in Road Rage's territory. Nano Tracing trying to set up for a knockout here. Hayden being annoying on top left. He's going to find the pick onto Skep, and two members of Road Rage are kind of locked in this bottom area. He's going to find a double onto Hayden as well. Second checkpoint is gone. Bo Boshin is popping the cooler on the tower, and 
This could be lights out here, Siren. Yeah, five seconds left to go, two seconds left to go, or two ticks, rather. Uh, the tower is completely empty of members from Nano Tresson, but you can see they've all grouped up on that bottom right there. Tear your mom, gonna run back in, try and spot someone out with that marker. It's gonna be able to get the assist with that pick as well, and is spotting out, uh, I, I believe, Seals there down the center is just trying to find any way they can be a nuisance at this point in time while they buy some, uh, some more uh, pressure for their team. Already this tower has made its home uh, here in Road Rage to spawn, setting up a mortgage. It feels like at this point, Road Rage just cannot get Nano Tracing out of their area, it seems. And I mean, it's just been an, a real uphill battle for them. It just seems like the tower special advantage has been cycling more and more advantage for Nano Tracing. But finally, Road Rage finding some picks. It's just going to be Boshin starting to run away a little bit. Road Rage finally stabilizing a bit in the map, but Boshin finds the pick onto Seals anyway. So Nano Tracing can push it right back if they want to. Yeah, it feels like Seals got a little bit greedy there, a little bit uh, ahead of schedule. Um, you know, it, they're definitely upset because the rent payments were overdue, as you may have mentioned before. <laughs> uh, so it's kept going to be popping that cooler and saying, all right, it's time. But Pixel saying, nope. <laughs> Once again, Pixel how do they find two there? In. I I don't know. I think they need to they need to do like a like a pixel protection plan or something <laughs> to uh, stop these things from happening because this has been a very recent occurrence and uh, just sort of reoccurring thing that, that that keeps happening this game. Pixel doing pixel things, I guess. I don't know if it's the same pixel that was you know big in Splatoon one. I probably not, but. No. That'd be a crazy coincidence. They definitely have the aggression of the Pixel of old, and uh, that's going to convert to an, a wipeout on Road Rage yet again. Nano Tracing just... It feels like they've been an advantage the entire game uh, for the full four minutes, it feels like. Yeah, I I believe I believe the Pixel from Splatoon 1 is uh, is off playing Foam Stars right now. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> as you can see, another attempt from uh, Nano Tresen to get into their uh, base. Uh, once again, Terry and Mom in a great spot to be getting these picks on the top right, getting Skep out of the way. That's gonna, you know, usually when you get zapped, the callout is okay. Cooler is no longer a thing for now. Uh, as we look down the barrel of a knockout here, that crab is gonna be coming out. Wait, they're able to stop the tower at one. It's just gonna be Terry and Mom and Pixel on that tower. Pixel having to back up, trying to rely on some jumpings perhaps, getting on that tower and trading just enough to drag that point counter down zero dang road rage ran out of that clutch factor just a little bit too early it was at five if it was at two it was at one and road rage was still holding on but that just momentum from nano chasing they'd been building up over the whole course of the game just was you could not deny it at that point definitely not uh it, that was going to be a really difficult comeback for road rage to have anyways um and obviously you want to win as many games early on in the set as you can but sometimes if it's gonna tilt you, if it's gonna upset you, there there might be those instances where you just go, all right, guys, I mean, that one was maybe a wrap from like the first two minutes in to begin with, uh, but let's let's move on, let's look towards the next, and, and hopefully we can we can build upon that from here. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're Road Rage, you have to kind of just say GG go next. That was a rough map for them. I feel like rough map for their comp, you know, not a lot of long range options uh, on that team, especially, you know, when they, uh, had the T-Tech as opposed to the Trust and no Zuka. Um, but Nano Tracing has just been winning a lot of these battles and doing a great job of facilitating uh, P Pixel on the rollers just to move forward and shark and find picks and Rode has been struggling with that for sure. Yeah, I think, and that's the number one thing, is they just didn't have a tool to specifically deal with Pixel and the way that they were playing that game. Uh, I, I know Sencon was still playing the Rapid with the Marker there, uh, but, you know, Marker is only as, as good as where, you're, where you land the shots, right? So if you don't have a general idea of where they are, that, that Marker is not going to do much good for you. But moving on, we have Rainmaker. I almost would anticipate a move to a comp with more bombs in it which i believe is what we're looking at here yeah we're seeing ballpoint nouveau coming out okay so not a bomb but it has the uh the vacuum it has the ink mine it has a little bit of something hayden going on to the end try uh terrier going back to the ain over from game two so a little bit of return to what nano has been playing earlier um not quite as many unique weapons but still nano a very flexible team and it's been hard for real rage to figure it out yeah, Road Rage is definitely going to be uh, working on different strategies as we look into these games here. Uh, you can you can tell that VAC has a purpose for sure. I, I don't know how necessary it is to get that jump on this map in particular, but if you if you look at Rainmaker as a whole and you go, let's play VAC in this, I think that's probably what you want to stick with regardless. 
Yeah, I would say so as well. But Nano Trace is already going to get the checkpoint, and now here comes the jump. You you want to see a magic trick? You want to see 30 points disappear on the on the score? Maybe not, because Rodri is trying to defend it with Zuka and Inkvac, but it's not going to last forever. Hayden already pushing in, finding picks wherever they can. Rodri's just trying to stop the jump however they can, and it looks like they're going to be successful. Yeah, getting the pick onto Boshin is going to be a pretty big deal there. That Rainmaker is going to be resetting back in a mid with two members down on the side of Nano Trace. And uh, they are going to be returning here, as you can see. Terrier Mom playing a little bit forward uh, as the others, like Pixel, are getting back in here. Just trying to hold some paint in their court while they stall out uh, for Skep to pop that cooler. And that VAC is going to be coming out, trying to use that to clear the checkpoint on the left side. Seems like they're trying to overload that VAC, but not quite paying off as they're able to deploy it as soon as possible. But they seem to to help that ink get ready just just for this per particular instance i mean one of anova's strengths that doesn't have many but oops, it has a few strengths and one such strength is having a lot of ink jets and terrier has an ink jet whenever nano Jason needs it and uh right there it proved very effective <laughs> Yeah, Terrier doing a really good job at holding paint on the right side here. Understands that this is the route that Road Rage is preferring to take that Rainmaker from now on. And I understand the the usage in that. If you don't know if you're going to get like a wipeout anytime soon, it might be the slower but easier route to take. Uh, Seals catching the jump out onto the side of Nano Trace in there, but Pixel going to be popping that Zuka and stopping any chances that Road Rage, ha Road Rage has in progressing for the time being. Yeah, right now Pixel already striking onto this ledge. Boshin going to be running it left here, trying to get as many points as they can. Down to 53, not that many, but it's just going to be Dved, Dved left alone right here. Hayden already on the flank, trying to find the pick, and they're going to do just that with just the massive hitbox of Entry. Throwing Fizzy for the support, and right now the points are starting to melt down to 25, even beyond where the jump would have taken them. And uh, Nano Tracen looking to make a repeat of Game, two, of game 3. Oh, but Pixel getting behind them at the Rainmaker pedestal already. They are going to trade as well, but that's still going to allow Boshin to pick up this Rainmaker here. That cooler came out as well. They're trying to get up this ramp as far as they can. They're in a really good spot to rain down some Rainmaker shots with a lot of coverage there, and that is going to reward them with the knockout and a two-game advantage overall in the set. Yeah, I feel like a big, you know, threshold in uh, Ludi sets is who gets to the three-game win uh, threshold first? Because mm -hmm. that kind of like bisects the set, and usually, you know, the team that has that momentum is going to be able to convert it into the second half. So the question for Road Rage is how are they going to be able to stop the aggression and the momentum that Nam Tresson has been building up over the course of the last few games, and how can they swing it back into their favor before it gets too late? Yeah, if I was in the position of Road Rage, I would definitely be a little bit worried right now going into another Splat Zones map as we rotate it into the fifth game of the set overall. Uh, you can see here on that replay as well, Seals catching the pick, but not quite anticipating uh, Pixel and Potion uh, collaborating to, to create a hectic situation uh, for all sides of the game, if you really look at it that way. Yeah, I mean... Nano Tracer is just going to hit you from all sorts of directions, and you're just not going to expect it. I mean, especially heavy shark weapons that kill so fast as Entry and Carbon Deco, you really cannot, you know, you have to have eyes pretty much everywhere, and Road Rage just doesn't have, you know, that kind of recall capabilities because their comp just can't really fit it in, at least based on what they've been running currently. Yeah, I think if I'm Road Rage right now, I need to be thinking of specific strategies to deal with Pixel specifically. Because uh, you could see in that game, more or less, like, you can attribute the game win in some shape or form to Pixel for the both, like, both last two games. Which is not usually what you can say for rollers. It's, it's usually like, okay, this guy is causing us a huge mess, but, like, that's not the person capping the zone. That's not the person doing this. Like, but... With Pixel just being as dominating as they have been and catching them off guard and, and not really letting them build momentum, that's going to make it really difficult for them. So I would really like to see how they approach this from here on out. Maybe they're going to play something that has a specific tool to deal with it. Going back to the Rapid here, but maybe their strategy lies in uh, something else. Maybe it's, it's just playing in a certain way that doesn't allow those things to happen. Yeah, I mean, we're going into game five here, so... It looks like this is kind of Nano Tracen's zone comp. They, it's very similar to what they ran in game one. Um, Road Rage is going to have that long rapid here. It's one of the strongest uh, rapid deco maps in the game, if memory serves me. So, all but already Nano Tracen pushing forward. Here comes Pickle. Here comes Hayden. They're going to be getting picks. They're going to be getting your flat, whether you want it or not. 
Yeah, you can see Pixel here now trying to scheme some things is under their snipe, waiting for just any little fish bait to, to pop up in front of them. Does see that uh, Skep was taking the long route over to the zone and trying to get behind them, but Pixel says, well, I'll get behind you as well. Uh, we can <laughs> we can play the same game here, even if it accomplishes two different things. Yeah, Splash can be popped again. Now Trasen already below that 50 point threshold in just the first minute, but Road is finally fighting back a little bit. I mean, in game one, it was a comeback on zone, so this is still in the realm of possibility. Road Rage was very ahead for most of the game, so if Road Rage can just kind of lock in and keep uh, Nano Racing locked out, they can definitely do well here, especially on a map like Barnacle. Yeah, you definitely see Sencon here uh, getting into a spot to try and, like, keep out anyone entering from this side is kind of on right side duty but that Ingsuka will dislodge any issues uh, even at a distance uh, as it's famously known for so with that being said we're back into this position where Nano Tresson is you know they're they're gonna do what they do best and that's just like all right approach us we dare you we have we have an explo that is holding on a splashdown for literally anything uh, as you can see getting that popped uh, but is going to go down from the looks of it as well. But that zone is still capped in their favor very dominantly. Oh, and as <laughs> Commentator's Curse is going to be back in uh, Roger's favor right there. Deviant is going to find a pick onto Pixel as well. This is exactly what Roger has been looking for so far in the set. But what can they convert off this? Both of the big aggressors on Nano Chasing are down. Uh, Terrier, though, is going to be able to defend themselves with the actual momentarily. It's going to be Boshin right now. Uh, members of Nano Tracing are respawning right now. Two down on the side of Road Rage here. They have to be careful. Deviate is going to find the pick onto Boshin, onto Zap. Road Rage almost out of their penalty, almost to the cap. Pixel trying to find some sort of picks, but the Zuka is going to find the pick on the scap, and the splashdown might just be enough to get the cap back into Nano Tracing's favor. Five points away from the lead here for Road Rage. Pinky, whatever happened to zone neutrality? I swear, both of these teams, like, they uncap the zone and cap it back into their... Okay, commentators, I can't have it. <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, that, sometimes you just speak it into existence. <laughs> I, got, I gotta speak it into existence. And now PK Fuzzy will join the room and uh. <laughs> be a random sub for Road Rage. Well, exactly. actually, wait, I have to say the opposite of that. Uh... Anyway, uh, <laughs> is going to be up here on that right side. Is going to be popping that splash down just as a get back tactic for now. Uh, they, you, you, you do know that they, they have all this uh, knowledge on where the members of Road Rage are, are pooling in from, and is going to back out very smartly. Seeing that that counter is down to three, they're like, all right, well, I'll try and outpaint you as best as I can, but we can't be dying on that zone. And thankfully, they didn't. But that didn't quite save them from getting the zone capped back in the favor of Road. Rage. Yeah, I mean, this is one of Road Rage's last chances at this point. A minute and a half left in regular time, and uh, Nano Tracing two points away from the knockout here. Terrier, my goodness, defends himself against Scab is going to force them to back off momentarily, but Road Rage done with their penalty. They're starting to score some points on the board. Divet has Crab at the ready to continue this push as long as possible. Pixel goes down early in targeted. This is exactly what Road Rage needs. They just have to convert it into picks and into lockouts, and they're doing just that. Yeah, 20, uh, 20 seconds or so on the board left. They do have that crab being popped. One of the members Nano of Nano Tresson is going to be down as well. It's only 10 seconds to get back in here. Boshin's going to have to make some important moves, but it's going to go down to Seals as well. There's the try coming in from the way. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. They were able to cap this. Wait, they're not able to cap it. Are they going to be able to cap it? Hold on. They have the lead, but not a Terrier is going to say anything about it. They're going to get the cap just barely. I thought that was surely going to be a knockout for Road Rage. They get the lead nonetheless, but now 35 seconds to get the zone back here. And I mean, the penalty is ticking down fast. All members up from Road Rage trying to make this happen with two specials alive on Nano Tracing to try and keep Road Rage at bay. This is going to be incredibly close here, Siren. Any picks are massive here for either side. Zuka's going to be popped. Splashdown is still in the reserves. Scab dropping with the cooler pops. One goes down. Uh, here goes the splash zone, but it's going to be able to find two. That might be the secret formula here. Terrier finds three, gets almost a quad, and is going to save the game with a knockout for Nano Tracing. Wow, what an intense splashdown. And if I am on road rage right here, I'm like, dang, like that was a big deal. Like we had to be taking out that explo before they're able to deploy that kind of thing. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for them there. They really had to go for the knockout when they could. And and sometimes you really just can't help it there uh, when you're dealing with this many painting weapons. But my brain could not even process the idea of like that, that zone getting flipped in those last two seconds there with a 2-1 lead.
I'm gonna be honest, me personally, if I was Road Rage, I'd be living up to the second half of their name uh, quite a bit. But you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a good, I'm not good, I'm not a good comp player for a reason. They're definitely better than me. But my goodness, that's a very frustrating way to lose that game. Just you have all the pieces there, you have the first picks, you have all the paint you could possibly want, but Terrier just says no. It's going to be so ever present with the actual pops the splash on at just the right time, showing that you know it's honestly a pretty solid special despite uh, its. Legacy in Splatoon 2, yeah, just the double there. Carrier backs up just the right distance to find another pick onto Sencon, and that's just all she wrote. So we can only theorize because we're we're here and they're in their own VCs and everything like that. But uh, hypothetically, if you are Road Rage right now and you are pretty tilted, do you feel like that's going to work in their favor or to their deficit? Because like some people. I feel like they lock in if they're mad. They're like, all right, that's it. I'm done losing. Time to go. But I think some people, they tend to tunnel vision in, in those situations as well. So what, mm -hmm. what do you think? I mean, I know that, you know, there are people that lock in uh, when they get when they start to tilt. But I think it's kind of rare to have four of those people playing at the same team <laughs> at the same time and turning the tilt positive in the same way. So if I'm yeah. Road Rage, uh... The tilt is absolutely not what I want to see here, but regardless, the game is frustrating. It's the game we play. Uh, here's their last chance. Road Rage was able to win on Clamless last time, but here it's a new flavor, a much more aggressive flavor on the new and improved Umami Ruins. Yeah, it looks like they're sticking to their guns, uh, literally and uh, metaphorically. Um, though I do see that switch into the 52 gal uh, deco, which I think is very funny given our last conversation it's like all right <laughs> i'm mad time to play the, the the uh controversial weapon time to play solo queue i feel like whenever you, every 52 player just plays solo queue and it works out for them uh not working out for road reach though they're gonna go two down early three down early is just going to be sencon forced to back up already with the rapid pro and terrier's gonna get that pick for the delayed wipe already putting on more pressure my God, it just never stops with vandal tracing yeah, I I don't even know what to think. Like, that was, like, in the first 30 seconds of the game, already getting a push into there. That screen is going to stop them for now. But if they really wanted to, I think they could have pushed that a bit farther, maybe just choosing to uh, save what they have and, and keep up their momentum for a better push than what they already just built there. Yeah, I mean, only eighty, only a 20-point push, you know, from down and nothing devastating quite yet. Um, but it could convert into more if Road Rage doesn't get out of their... Uh, area here and that's one of the challenges on this map it's kind of hard to get out of your spawn to get out of that lockout uh but scap's gonna be going on this flank angle here trying to do just that gonna pop the cooler for the squad gonna get some beverages out um and it looks like road is out in lockout and now it's just about converting that momentum into mid screen's gonna be popped behind the teammates scap trying to take this fight onto terrier i sounds like it's gonna be a trade yeah, we're, we're not seeing what you're seeing at home, but uh, <laughs> we're just going to assume that everything went perfectly and uh, everyone's happy. Um, so Hayden going to be taking top mid here, does have that splashdown ready as well. And I think what we're seeing as far as patterns go is that Nanotracen has learned from their first Clam Blitz game that they really cannot go four down while pushing the basket of Road Rage because that just re results in Road Rage actually getting a chance to do anything. Uh, you know, and attempting is different than doing sometimes. So... Uh, they are going to wipe regardless with Pixel going down last. So that's kind of rough, but at least the Rapid Pro is going to be the first one in, which is probably their best defensive support. Uh, but with, with that screen there, uh, no one's going to be able to see anything. Yeah. Ooh, missed the power claim, but it shouldn't matter. Yeah, that's going to be the lead in Road Rage's favor. They're definitely a clam with steam, it seems. They're very strong in this mode, just consistently. Um, lead's going to be at 39 compared to 50. Again, very close lead here between these two teams, but it's going to be in favor of Road Rage for now uh, after the first two minutes of this game. Approaching the halfway mark of regular time here. Let's see what's going to happen. But Nam Tracen, they might just lock in. This is scary territory for Road Rage. Yeah, they are definitely looking down the, uh, you know, the path of this is going to be a 5-1 perhaps. And it's definitely worrying when your opponent gets to the four point mark in the set. So uh, they, they definitely have to be playing their cards perfectly for the rest of the hour um and that's that's really difficult thing to do uh so <laughs> road rage is going to be popping this cooler here trying to make this fight worth it as much as they can that 52 is going to go down first unfortunately has that cooler so they do have a second opportunity at this as well you can see Hes uh, Hayden playing a little bit hesitant in mid, uh, just trying to make sure, once again, that they, they don't have another wipeout situation that's going to cost them the game because, you know, you could see how many points Road Rage got that first time. So, 
Oh no, it looks like they were trying to go for somewhat of a jump and somebody may have snuck in there, but that leads to a bit of a scatter into the members of Nano Trace in here. And maybe a bit of a scatter for the Clams for Road Rage. What are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at playing Hot Potato, it seems, after playing a little bit of, of a, I don't even know, just hopping all over the place regardless of whether he's going to get the basket open going to get it down to 20 he's going to go three down in the process but now road has a pretty sizable lead so it's going to be about playing defense but playing defense for uh what a minute 35 including overtime not a fun prospect on this map especially you know given the track record of the set but road rage definitely is in you know the position they're behind the eight ball if they want to get this win yeah, Terrier Mom popping that uh, Killer Whale pretty early on here. You can see they're actually getting the pick on the Suncon. That's going to be a huge defensive force out of the way. That wall's coming out, but Boshin says, I'll just go around it. There's an opening here. Uh, might get a pick on one more. Gets that dunk in to open up things for their teammates. That Pity Clam is still sitting under their basket. So if somebody does respawn pretty soon, they might be able to knock this out with just one Power Clam and an extra supporting one as well. That Splashdown's going to mean they drop. Is this going to be one member left? It's going to be the end zap. Where are they? That is such a concerning thing. You see those three clams up on the board. They actually are able to get the pick on the end zap. Saw them sneaking under that snipe there, but that was nearly a knockout for them. Devade not quite seeing Pixel though. Wait, hold on. Okay. 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 Pixel's Pixel gonna jump out. Noise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right now, Road Ridge is threatening to knock out in return, but these two power clams are not enough. They need an extra clam and then another one if they want to get the knockout in their favor. And I'm sure they need to just end the insanity of this game. But uh, Seal's going to go down early. Two down on the side of Road Race. Three down. That might just be the end of the set. The full wipeout right as the overtime horns start blaring. And that is going to seal it 5-1 here for Nano Tracen. And a great set for them to end that off on. You could see that they were really dedicated to getting that defense in the end part of the game. Pixel, you know, if I'm Pixel, I'm going to be greedy for that pick on that pillow. <laughs> but you saw, like, they were like, eh, I'm not going to risk losing this or trading this and then letting the others get in uh, where it's more important. Uh, so let me just jump out of this as soon as I can and support my team. And that really worked out. Yeah, definitely worked out great here for Nano Tracer. I mean, this was just a really well played set. Road Rage had a lot of signs of life, a lot of signs of brilliance throughout the set, especially, you know, in games one and five. Um, and, you know, also there in game six. But Nano Tracer just seemed to have that clutch gene whenever they needed it, uh, apart from game two there. Whenever they needed to make that comeback, they were able to do so just off of sheer momentum and sheer uh, aggression here. And Road Rage really struggled to, you know, keep up in the face of it. Yeah, I, I think they, they really targeted the key players when they needed to. You saw when they were like, okay, we're going to push. Let's take out the defensive player. Oh, all right, we're, we're, we're going to defend. Uh, let's let's deal with other members like Skep, who, who can't generate more coolers. We can't, you know, we'll take out the, the duelies. Just any any aggressive player when they need to. So they, they really played into their strategies and, and dealt with the members of Road Rage in a very, like, I, I would say sophisticated way. Yeah, and I mean, they also did a great job of sort of rattling Road Rage whenever they could. Switching their weapon comps every single game, I would imagine, makes it really hard for Road Rage to find a rhythm to play into because every game is an entirely different matchup, and that is extremely disorienting to play with, but if you can get it working in your favor like Nanofacen just did, it makes it really hard for your opponents to get a read on you. That's really true. I hadn't really considered that angle itself. It's it's definitely one of those learning curve things where uh, the ceiling is really high to play that way, uh, but but it rewards players really really well because it's just one of those things that like I'm gonna go on a tangent here for a second, but I <laughs> like Ludi because it lets me plan for what my opponents are doing. Like I know in advance who I'm playing and when I'm gonna be playing them. Uh, where like versus a regular tournament where okay we don't know until basically the tournament starts most of the time who we're going to be playing against and when and you just watch it unfold in front of you so okay my opponent could be this or this but it depends on who wins and maybe one of them will win and one of them will da, 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 da. but with Ludi planning out a strategy and knowing your opponent's roster and all this stuff uh it, it is super super important so it, it does give you that window of time where you get to like really really do your homework and uh i think that does maybe make things a little uh easier for teams that maybe wouldn't normally win that matchup to get an opportunity to do so yeah i mean it it's not really helpful to do your research into your opponent if the data you're given is that okay in the first three games they're gonna play 10 different weapons 
<laughs> and their x player is going to be flexing onto Nova Shot with Inkjet, and their Tri player is going to be flexing onto Nautilus with Splashdown, and it's like... Yeah. It's, <laughs> but for it, a team like Nanotress, and the opposite of it really works well for them because they can look at a team like Road Rage and they go, okay, they play this and they play that. And then like on zones, they might switch to this, but that's about the extent of the differences, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it's really fun to see, you know, that sort of wide array of weapons and that, you know, master of, or that jack of all trades archetype that Nanotress and comps have been playing into, you know, work at such high level and just... Uh, Road Rage just kind of struggled to keep pace with it, it seems. So, I mean, there you go. There's advantages and disadvantages to every playstyle, but Nano Tracing definitely found the advantages of their deep pockets there in that game. Yeah. So, uh, good job from both of them. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts before we uh, take our break before the next set and uh, two people take over for us? Um, I mean, not really. Shoutouts to both these teams for putting on a show. Definitely fun set to watch. Uh, closer than the score says, for sure, I would say. Uh, shout out yeah. to Dynamite for being the bomb streamer, as always. Um, yeah. That being said, I think that's about all I got. Yeah, I, I pretty much mirror what you're saying as well. I know for teams like Road Rage, they might be feeling a little bit bummed right now. But as you said, they played really strong here. I think they still have a good opportunity to have a great looty season in the, the weeks following this one as well. Absolutely. But with that being said... That's going to be the end of the set. Make sure not to go anywhere because uh, in just a little bit, we're going to have a Div 6 set uh, with DRF and Hammy on the mic. That's going to be fun.